so again we have just set representing the the dark principle we have the crescent moon with with representing on this head where this is again 4,000 years after the picture of Isis and again we have the symbol of the spiritual energy uh, or the little orb on top of his head falling into the horns so these symbols are very very ancient and here we have a tarot card and the reason I brought the tarot card up is because this is this is Kronos or this is Saturn and in uh, modern day we know him as Father Time he's harvesting the the um, the crop so that he can bring um, new life you have to take out the old the dead crop harvest the wheat and bring on the the new age or the new the new wheat or the new harvest for next year make room for the sowing of the new seed and that's what we have down here we get the, there's a crown just to bring up a little side topic the word crown comes from the word chronos I mean, it's obviously, you can see the derivative, crown, chronos. And it just means that in, in the old system, the old Babylonian system, they were crowned under the god of time. They were crowned under the, under the, the, the dominating god of Saturn, or chronos, or El, possibly. This is Aleister Crowley's, uh, from Aleister Crowley's tarot deck. This is also the death card which you can see also the sickle and we have Isis's or the the Osirian headgear on which is a little bit similar to the, the headgear Isis wears except that we have uh, not no, not an orb on the top but a little bit more of a, a cone shape and we have a fish because this is all symbolic of the age of the fish or the age of Pisces and, and the death of that age so we have the death of the age of Pisces and we have uh, Hebrew correspondences down here which is noon which uh, means fish in Hebrew, N-U-N, and Nun um, is a letter of the Hebrew alphabet for the N sound. And we have the, the Scorpio correspondent, which is the M, because essentially um, Scorpio, or the symbol for M, is a Christian symbol for Mary, or the C, or Mare, uh, the C, because this whole situation here represents um, a great mystery of a great flood and cataclysm. That's why all the symbols of the fish and the C and the nautical symbols and the M for Mary. If you look at the symbol for Virgo, it's an M with a little squiggly line down at the bottom. If you look closer, the squiggly line is a fish. So we have um, the M and the fish, or the the Virgin, the Mary, and the fish, or the or the Jesus or the Christ. So that's the symbol for Virgin, Virgo, in the sign. Now. I'm just going to read a little bit now. Saturn was regarded by all mankind as a supreme god. The old word for Saturn was El, possibly, and hence the word Bab-El, or Babylon, which apparently in, in the old Phoenician Canaanite language means the gate of God. Now, if we take the word Bel in Hebrew, um, who essentially was the god that um, the Israelites were worshipping when Moses came down off of Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments, according to the story, the god Bel, who was the golden calf, um, is the word Ba'el, which means Ba in Hebrew is uh, the verb to go or to come, and El, God, so go to God, come to God. So the, the word Bel simply meant coming to God. And um, this is all a great mystery. And when we look at this through the eyes of, of modern scholarship or modern uh, magicians or occultists, we inevitably are going to bring Kabbalah into it. Now, Kabbalistically, the word L equals out to 31. And 3 times 31 is 93. Now, without going on to a whole, you know, Kabbalistic and Gematria rant, I'm just going to briefly touch on this because it's pertinent to the whole occult situation. Now, Aleister Crowley wrote, a, uh, you know, apparently was a prophet of a book. Uh, you know, whether you want to argue that is another story, but he wrote a book. He was the author of a book known as uh, the Book of the Law, which he entitled Liber 31, or Liber Vel Allegis. Liber, book, Vel of the 31, uh, you know, Legis, law, so Book of the Law. And, um... 
this whole three three times thirty one business brings these other Greek words uh, agape, which means love, and the actual entity that apparently communicated this text to Crowley called himself Iwas, which when Crowley translated into Hebrew concocted a ninety three uh, or a a word with a value of ninety three in the Hebrew uh, system. There is a little bit of confusion, though, because in the in the Kabbalistic system, the Sephirot Chesed, um, which is deemed or corresponded to the god name Al, is under the influence of Jupiter, not Saturn. Saturn is under the influence or influenced by or influences the sphere of Bina, which is um, under the title of the god name Yahweh Elhim. So there's a lot of confusion about Saturn and Jupiter and which one was the actual object of worship I mean so both of these two two um, two planets right now give off more heat than they take from the Sun they could possibly have been stars or possibly could become stars so when we think about all mystery religions being either devoted to Saturn or Jupiter it brings up a lot of questions um, there's a lot of occult theorists that say about 7,000 years ago, Saturn exploded, creating a series of catastrophic events that went uh, into the solar system. They think that J uh, Jupiter and Saturn once constituted a double star system, and this is evidenced by the fact that they give off more energy or more heat than they actually take in from the sun. Saturn used to be a lot bigger, according to these theories, and uh, because of the instability of Saturn and Jupiter being next to each other and the influence they had upon one another, an explosion took place. Apparently, the Greek myth of Kronos, or Saturn, in the Romans, uh, Roman myth or pantheon, swallowing his five children, were the five planets that Saturn swallowed up as it flared inward towards the sun. So this mythology apparently comes from, from this um, astronomic event that apparently happened according to these theorists. Now, the planet Venus, along with four other planets, burst out from Saturn at this point, and uh, this is what possibly destroyed Mars and caused the floods on Earth. So the Aryan race at this point, um, which is the reason Mars uh, has affiliations with Aries and the whole business with that whole uh, correspondence, came to Earth and set up the Aryan race here on Earth, where we get that name, the Aryan race. So, just some of the other symbols that we use today about Saturn with all the ring business with wedding rings and stuff and um, apparently um, Saturn dispelled or from itself enough material to form over 60 satellites and these became a lot of what we see on the inner solar system and some of what is in the asteroid belt um, now, Aries is the Greek and Roman name for the planet Mars, which is where we get the word Arian, like I already said. I'm just reading through some of this stuff. The Arians arrived on Earth and were known as the Giants or the Titans. The gravity on Mars apparently is less, and that's why these Giants or these initial Arian um, race was supposed to be bigger. Or the Giants, the Nephilim is what we would call them um, in the Judeo-Christian doctrine. Now... Venus and Mars both came very close to Earth, and this is what created the floods on Earth. This has apparently happened during the, the explosion of Saturn because of the interplay between Saturn and Jupiter. So this is obviously not orthodox astronomy, but this is a lot of the occult theories, and um, this is what, uh, quite honestly, is leading to a speculation that the elite class through technology intends to reignite Saturn as the object of worship as L and um, bring Lucifer back to the forefront of the pantheon